An aeroplane approaching the airport at Ivalo makes a forced landing in the wilderness and more than 200 passengers are hurt or perish. The passengers are mainly British tourists, but in the group there are also other nationalities. In the Lapland area, a major accident situation is announced and help is requested from countries in the Barents region. The Barents Rescue 2007 project was related to Finland's chairmanship of the Euro-Arctic Barents Council. The aim of the training was to facilitate cooperation between parties who participate in rescue operations in the Barents region. The objectives of the training formed the foundation for the realisation of the entire project and they were demonstrated in every event relating to it. The overall objectives of the exercise are to test how functional agreements on assistance are, to test how effectively the countries in the Barents region can pass alarms to each other in case of a major emergency or share information with each other, to develop leadership skills in major emergencies, to practice and develop information sharing at all levels, to improve preparedness and the maintenance of situation awareness, to develop transportation and logistics, particularly in view of preventing hypothermia in major accidents, to develop the capacity to organise a major international exercise. Penti Partonen from the Minister of the Interior acted as the head of the exercise and Petri Taito from the Crisis Management Centre as the executive project leader. The Crisis Management Centre and the State Provincial Office of Lapland were responsible for assembling the project organisation. In the first stage of the training, alarm training, the initial situation was that the aircraft disappeared from air traffic control, made a forced landing and a major accident alarm was given in the area of Lapland. The emergency centres of the Barents region gave an alarm of an accident scenario. Based on this, Finland requested help from dozens of organisations related to aircraft rescue operations, rescue operations and public health services. Authorities received information at local, regional and international levels about what had taken place. In Finland, the Prime Minister's Office and the Ministry of the Interior were also informed of the alarm. Things moved fluently to the second stage of the training, the virtual management drill, tabletop exercise, also known as TTX, lasted two days and in it more than 200 people practiced management at different levels. When designing the exercise, it was decided to emphasize a management point of view at a very early stage. Management of the accident was based on cooperation between control centers and separate organizations, which must show continued improvement. The situation information and related communications were distributed with the help of realistic data transfer techniques. During the first training day of the TTX phase, the assembling of resources, the establishment of control centres and the start of the rescue phase were developed. The on-site command control and communication centre Lima, local emergency management authority were established by the rescue services of Lapland. Subordinate to Lima and responsible for international organisation is OSOC. During the second training day of the TTX phase, evacuations and communications were developed. Evacuation of the accident site began with the Army's transport equipment. 
From Norway and Finland, several rescue helicopters arrived, and from Sweden, a SAS intensive care transport plane. Gathering the media and providing information to relatives are a challenge for all the authorities and organisations which operate in the accident situation. The tabletop training exercise included simulated media operations. The exercise showed that there is still a need for development in most organisations. The practising of distributing information could be a theme for a special training exercise in the future. During the training, much was learned about the benefit of technology as well as the control of information. The third stage of the training on the third day was a field training exercise FTX, held at the airport in Ivalo. This phase of the training developed the functional abilities of the separate organisations and to cooperate in practice. The training commenced from the first moment when the aircraft made a forced landing. The aircraft's crew helped transfer passengers to a safer area and gave signals to the rescuers looking for the site of the accident. The first to arrive at the accident site was a rescue unit which foamed the area leading to the smoking rear frame of the aircraft. In the difficult circumstances the work was exact and demanding. The rescue unit's field leader, P3, directed the arriving rescue units to other parts of the aircraft. The rescue group, which had arrived from Russia, reported to assist. The local concentration area was set up rapidly using inflatable tents where it was possible to protect and give first aid to more seriously injured red and yellow patients. Protection from the cold was one of the most central subjects of the training. At the first aid post, several first aid teams were led by doctors. The groups were directed in the field by Dr L3. Transport logistics also controlled the experienced doctors. The green patients, who had been hurt less, were counted carefully and were gathered by warm campfires. The resources of the border guard detachment were needed for transporting the casualties to the landing area planned for the helicopters. On arrival, the helicopters from Finland and Norway flew non-stop between the accident site and the airfield according to the situation. On the airfield, the casualties were collected in a triage centre and were classified in more detail for further action. The field hospital of the Finnish Red Cross and Swedish Rescue Services Agency received Urshan casualties that required surgery and patients waiting for onward transport were monitored in the ward. The police performed a search of the neighbouring area of the crash because one person had been reported missing. The police also had the task of identifying the dead and protecting the bodies, as well as setting up a perimeter and informing the neighbouring area. The accident investigation group documented the wrecked aircraft and looked for signs as to the cause of the accident. Transportation of the more seriously hurt casualties was performed around the Berents region by helicopters. They were taken to hospitals able to carry out intensive care to Stockholm by Swedish transport aircraft and by transport aircraft to Hus in Helsinki.
In uninhabited areas of the north, evacuations must be arranged covering hundreds of kilometers. In such situations, it must be possible to flexibly connect the transport capacities of separate organizations and countries. The system of medical evacuation was developed during the project from a local to a national level, which will also benefit citizens in the future. The fourth stage of the training was an evaluation in which all the stages of the training were gone through. The Emergency Services College R&D team collected information and led the evaluation. At the same time, it carried out research into new evaluation techniques. The evaluation report has led to better understanding, allowing for better training development and improved the learning of organisations. In connection with the training were two seminars. The other seminar was Barents Rescue 2007. Its central theme was protection from the cold and hypothermia. The next Berents Rescue exercise will be organised in Murmansk in 2009. It is important to develop readiness and to arrange large, fully comprehensive international training exercises. For the Crisis Management Centre, organising the project provided an opportunity to develop its own operations.